So this is the the next iteration on the series that I've been doing um, pretty much the last couple of weeks. I think I skipped last week because I was traveling, but we're talking about Teams Toolkit, and today I'm going to talk about Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. So just to recap on what that series has looked like so far, a um, couple weeks ago I did an introduction on just an overview of all of Teams Toolkit, and then uh, two weeks ago I talked about Teams Toolkit for VS Code. Today I'll talk about for VS. And then um, coming up, we'll talk about the CLI uh, deploying with Azure and how to use CI CD with our templates. So trying to give you an end-to-end -end kind of overview of everything that we have um, built for developing uh, apps with Teams. All right, so uh, in case you weren't here in those previous sessions, uh, this is what Teams Toolkit um, is, at least in my words. It's mostly project templates and samples and a bunch of documentation on building uh, apps for Teams, also for um, office add-ins and custom agents. Uh, we also have automation. So this is like a composable task runner uh, to automate a lot of the setup to try to make that tedious process a little less tedious. And then you can group those configuration sets and it's a feature we call environments. And we have infrastructure templates. So we have optional templates using Bicep for you to host these things in Azure and then a way for you to provision those things and also deploy the code to those resources. And we have a simulator-like tool that we call the app test tool right now. So that's a way for us to kind of mock a little bit of what Teams does, but doesn't require you to have any accounts or any tenants or any permissions or anything like that. So you can do a lot more local um, to your machine. And we have a design time previewer called the adaptive card previewer. And we also have uh, GitHub workflow and Azure DevOps templates uh, to do CI CD. And we also have support for creating dev tunnels. So it makes things a little easier for you to debug these solutions. So that's all I have for the recap. So what I want to show you is Visual Studio. So let's get rid of PowerPoint. Um, maybe I can just bring this over here. Yeah, let me. Yeah, OK, there we go. All right, so we're in VS. Um, when you start up, uh, this is for VS 2022. That's where our extension lives. So you'll need to have VS 2022. And if you create a new project, we have uh, this is kind of the main entry point. We have a template for you to start. So project template is called Microsoft Teams app. If you don't see this, then you probably need to go into the VS installer. And under the ASP.NET workload, there's an optional component called uh, Teams developer tools, I believe, or, or something like that. So you can go ahead and add that additional component to your install, and then you'll see this template and you'll get all of our tooling that I'm going to show you here today. When you select this template, um, my font's a little big, so got to make these windows a little larger for you. There's a bunch of sub templates as part of that. So we have uh, all sorts of things anywhere from like uh, just Teams apps like tabs and bots, um, simple stuff like an Echo bot, all the way to the newer things like API plugins, or we have templates that uh, allow you to create some AI scenarios using the Teams AI library. Um, we have things set up for you to, to connect with Azure AI search, as you can see here. And there's a bunch of templates here you can explore uh, on how you want to start all the way down to also an empty Teams app. So this would just be a Teams app project with no capabilities, um, which is can be useful if you want to add it to an existing project. Um, so what I've done here is I selected basic AI chatbot, and I've already created this to save a little time. So let me close this. I already have it open here. So this is a basic AI chatbot. And the solution will have two projects in it. The first project is unique to our extension. It's a, I think it's a special project type called TTK Proj or something like that. But basically it's to encapsulate all of the Teams app or you know the app package um, and all the automation stuff, basically all the tooling features. So that way they are isolated from your implementation and your other .NET projects. And what we have in here is an app package folder. So this is where your app oh, manifest would live. And sure. I see someone is not on mute. So if you don't mind, please mute yourself. Otherwise, I'll forget what I'm talking about. Uh, so this is the app manifest. Uh, so this is where your app package will live. So you can go ahead and whoops, we can modify that. For environments, uh, these are the environment files for how you can configure Teams Toolkit. And so uh, if you have used Teams Toolkit at all, you, you might be familiar with this, but if not, this is how you can customize things like uh, what's your bot ID, app ID. Uh, these are all the ways that we can configure uh, placeholders. Like here in the manifest, we have a Teams app ID. This is something the tools can generate for you. And so that's where all of those values will live. 
By default, we give you an infra folder. This is all of the bicep files for hosting in Azure. So for this project, we have an Azure uh, bot service, and we also have, I believe, uh, looks like, yeah, an app service configured in here. And so our tooling can help you create these things uh, and provision them in Azure. That's optional that you don't have to do, use those if you don't want to, or if you have another uh, way to deploy these things. Um, and then we have our automation files. So these YAML files are how we handle automation. And so this is consistent with Teams Toolkit projects across the BS, CLI, doesn't matter. It's, it's kind, of, kind of part of our project system. And so we have kind of a task runner and you can uh, read through these and see what they do. But the idea is that this helps automate the setup of what's needed on the cloud side for a Teams app. So in this case, you need a Teams app ID. We have an automation task called Teams app create, and it will take in a name. So here's the name of my project template. And then it will, once it gets the output, which in this case is an app ID, here's the syntax for how it expresses where it's gonna save that. So it's gonna save it the Teams app ID. And so since this is the local one, we can look in the environment file. And I've already ran this to make sure everything was gonna hopefully work smoothly for you today. So there's already some values in here. Typically, this would be empty until you run it the first time. So you can see this is where it saved my Teams app ID. And since I've already run this, I've already created, the tools have already kind of created like the final version of that. So you can see here's what it looks like once the app ID is stubbed in, and then all those placeholder values are stubbed in as well, like my bot ID, et cetera. So the tools help you automate all this stuff and give you a final artifact to upload to the platform. So. Uh, you don't have to dive all into that when you first get started, though. What you can do is you could just go right into this sample project, which is this is kind of the implementation of that uh, bot. Um, so this is nothing too uh, specific here. To, there's nothing specific here to Teams Toolkit. Um, now we're just in like a web. I mean, if it's a web API project, but it has controllers in it. So there's one controller for a bot. This is very similar to what bot framework looks like. It uses the bot. Framework SDK. Um, in this case, we're also using the Teams AI library. So if we go into the starting here, there's a bunch of setup here for uh, you know boilerplate stuff that we give you in the project template. And then this particular template uses Teams AI library. So I can connect Azure. In this case, I've connected Azure OpenAI to my bot. So here's the setup for all that stuff. And all this is included by default in the template. And the only thing this bot does right now is uh, when I start a conversation, it'll just give me a welcome message. And then when I chat with it, it's going to send it to my language model and uh, give me a response. The prompt configuration for that is all set up for Teams AI library. So uh, here's my prompt. It's, uh, this is the template, so it's very simple. And this is the way I can configure Azure, Azure OpenAI. As part of the scaffolding step, I can enter my Azure OpenAI key. So I've done that so that way already that way, um, you know, you folks don't have to see my API key and then I have to delete everything that I've just built. So if you see that, just close your eyes. And the next part that we have is if you want to run this thing. Um, by default, we have the test tool. So this is the simulator like environment I was talking about. So what we can do is uh, just hit start. Don't need to log in or, or really create any resources for this um, because it's going to run locally and it should open up. I'll bring it over here. It just popped up on my other monitor. This is what the test tool looks like. And bring this over here. There we go. All right. So here's the test tool. And so this is a web app that's running locally, gives you some features that uh, try and simulate a lot of what Teams can do, like gives you a chat interface like a bot gives you a way to interact in a group setting so you can see um, how your bot behaves by mentioning it. Same for like a, a channel or a team. Um, and then you can mock a lot of the team's uh, activity messages that would come through in Teams. So you can, or you can create a custom one if you want. So you can see what your bot does when you get like the install um, install message or a user joins a channel, et cetera. Um, so the other thing it lets you do is, this is not gonna help you debug uh, like Teams, but what it will let you do is focus on your bot code, uh, which can be uh, nice to kind of eliminate variables here. Um, but it's also uh, super, you know, super quick because we don't have to go through the relays of teams and, and they'll actually go to the cloud or anything. So um, we can just talk here and I've already connected this to Azure OpenAI. So this is going to go to my language model and give me a response. So that's 
pretty fast, which is nice. Now I can just kind of iterate on my model and all that setup, and uh, you can set breakpoints, et cetera, debug how you would expect. But when you're ready to actually go to Teams, we have another debug target here set up by default for Teams. Um, the readme file goes through all these steps. So all these projects have a readme file in here, kind of walk you through how to use the template. But I'm going to show you. First thing you'll have to do is set up a dev tunnel. So VS Dev Tunnels is a feature of Visual Studio. I've created one that I've named Teams Dev, and I've already selected it, so it's running now. And Teams Toolkit will use that. Uh, so that way there's a tunnel created to debug this bot, because this is actually now going to run uh, through Bot Framework um, in the Bot Framework portal. So the first step would be to go ahead and trigger that composable automation I said to set up all these things. The way you do that is this Teams Toolkit menu. So there's a prepare Teams apps dependencies here and select what tenant, you know, the account for the, the Teams tenant you want to run in. Um, hit continue. I've already done this, so I don't need to do it again. But what that's going to do is it's going to run through all of these steps inside the YAML file and create the Teams app ID, the bot ID, um, update, you know, the app settings, development.json with the things I need to run my app, uh, register with bot framework, validate the manifest, make sure I didn't make any typos, et cetera. Make sure everything is good to actually run. And then once that's uh, done, you can hit start and we'll launch inside of Teams in a browser. So go ahead and bring that over here. Why is that so, that is really big. There we go, all right. All right, so launch inside of Teams. This is the normal install flow for Teams. So I'll go ahead and add that. You can see I have many sample projects that I've been playing with. All right, so here's my Teams app, uh, same thing. Uh, golden ratio, sure. So we can go ahead and talk to my bot. And actually, I was kind of expecting, OK, there it goes. Now it's on. So I got my welcome message, and there's my response to my message. So now I can go ahead and test inside of Teams. And since I only have a few minutes left, what I'll do is I'll also show you, um, you can also go back to this menu, provision in the cloud. And what that's going to do is use these infrastructure files to create Azure resources. So it's going to use this YAML file, and you can see one of the steps here, uh, right here, is to do an ARM deploy. And it's going to read from the infra directory, uh, go through and provision those resources, have you select your Azure account, your subscription, your resource group. I've already done this um, this morning, so things would work. And then once you provision, you can deploy, and that will do a zip deploy of your project up to those resources. And then you can preview it in, in this case, this is, uh, this is a Teams app, so I'm going to go ahead and preview it in Teams. And it will open up another Teams client with my dev version of the app. So I can go ahead and add this. And now this app is not running locally anymore. This is running inside of Azure in my subscription. And that, that should still, still be running, so it should work. And that will let me create uh, locally using the test tool, so I don't need anything inside of Azure, any accounts, anything like that. Um, you can also run it so your bot is running locally, but then debug inside of Teams, uh, inside of a Teams client. And then when you're ready, you can provision and deploy to Azure, so everything is running remotely, and test it that way as well. So you can do pretty much everything from Visual Studio. Um, but in the future module, I'll show you all of this stuff also works with our CLI tool. So you could connect this to CI CD as well, so you don't have to always be clicking these menus. Um, you could use you know, this stuff for local and then use provision and deploy in the CLI, but I'll go over that uh, next time. So that's what I have for you today. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. And then I think the only thing I would share with you real quick is if you want to get started, ak.ms slash TTK, and that'd be a good place to get started. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm.